Good morning, and welcome to the second LA 2021 Future Creative Talent Summit for 2021. I'm Sherry Belafonte, and I'm your host for this morning. Uh, you've probably seen me on TV over the years, but you know, that's the way the show goes. <laughs> anyway, I'm excited to be your host, and it's a beautiful day here in Los Angeles. And no matter where you may be tuning in from, I'm hoping it's just as nice for you. I'm delighted to have you join me here this morning. Let me start by first acknowledging the County of Los Angeles for leading in the organization of this second virtual summit for the year, which brings together Los Angeles' diverse web of stakeholders from the film, TV, and screen industries, all in one virtual space. For those of you who've joined us for the April summit, welcome back. For those of you attending for the first time, we hope you enjoy today's agenda of talks. Off the back of the hugely successful summit held in April, there is no more of an important time than now to bring everyone together to continue pushing forward on the hard hitting discussions on the opportunities and the challenges we face as an industry and as a community in Los Angeles. Every corner. Entertainment sector for all. Today's talks and panels will shine a light on those exact priorities that the county is focusing on. And as we look to build a diverse and sustainable career pipeline for those seeking a future in this city screen industries. It's great to see so many friends of the industry here today. I'd like to take a moment to recognize our incredible lineup and of sponsors for today's event. And forgive me if I pronounce any of these names wrong, but here we go. Sponsors are Amazon Studios, sag After, the Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, Viacom CBS, Warner Brothers, The Walt Disney Company, Sony Pictures Entertainment, Fox Corporation, NBC Universal, Netflix, and Southern California grant makers, and today's co-organizers, Beacon Economics. The county recognizes and appreciates all the support you have brought today to today's event and for your ongoing contributions to LA's entertainment industry. We are incredibly fortunate today to have the participation of the entire Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors. As Los Angeles' first ever all-female Board of Supervisors, woohoo! we thank each of them for their participation today. Los Angeles County Supervisor, 1st District, Hilda Solis. Los Angeles County Supervisor, 2nd District, Holly Mitchell. Los Angeles County Supervisor, 3rd District, Sheila Kuhl. Los Angeles County Supervisor, 4th District, Janice Hahn. Los Angeles County Supervisor, 5th District, Catherine Barger. We thank you all for your leadership and support of Los Angeles Screen Industries and look forward to hearing from each of you later today. Finally, today's event wouldn't be possible without the able support, time, and creative leadership of the LA 2021 Steering Committee. This group of people have been working tirelessly, and I mean tirelessly, this last year to bring together this program, and we thank them for their service. Paul Audley, president of Film LA, Colleen Bell, executive director of California Film Commission, Eva Batar, citywide filming coordinator and industry liaison for the city of Los Angeles, Angeline Buenaventura, creative talent development manager at Netflix, Patricia Castellanos, Workforce and Economic Sorry, Workforce and Economic Development Deputy in the Office of County Supervisor Cool, Lee Flores, Deputy Director of the California Film Commission, Leo Gomez, Creative and Marketing Strategy Consultant and Executive Producer, Denise Grand, Director of Arts Education, the City of the County of Los Angeles Department of Arts and Culture. Andrew Hoffman, member of the board of the Los Angeles Community College District Board of Trustees. Serena Kung, executive director of SAG-AFTRA. Larry LeBeau, executive director of New Filmmakers LA. Irma Levotic, program manager for the EIF Careers Program at the Entertainment Industry Foundation. Montea Robinson, executive director of the Ghetto Film School. Kristen Sakota, director of the Los Angeles County Department of Arts and Culture. Tamara Sanders, Center for Strategic Partnership at the Los Angeles, sorry, at the County of Los Angeles. Kirsten Schaff, Schaffer, Schaefer, Kirsten Schaffer, Schaefer, <laughs> Executive Director of Women in Film. Arlen Valdivia, Senior Director of State and Local Government Affairs at the Motion Picture Association. 
As we get underway, we hope you all enjoy today's program, which is powered by the virtual show. Check out its many features and be sure to enjoy the platform's unique network function to meet some of your fellow industry members joining us. Without further ado, let's get this program underway. Our first four speakers come to us via video to kick off proceedings and present some of the stories, voices, challenges, and lessons learned from this last year. Up first, Supervisor Sheila James Kuhl represents Los Angeles County's third district. As a member of the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors and immediate past chair, she has led the way and worked on great many initiatives and motions to improve people's lives and reform systems in the county, including a landmark motion in 2020, supporting the growth of Los Angeles film and digital media industry. Our next speaker will be Supervisor Hilda Solis, was sworn and she was sworn in as Los Angeles County Supervisor for the first district of Los Angeles County on December 1st, 2014. She was reelected to a new four year term in 2018. LA's newest County Supervisor, Holly Mitchell represents Los Angeles second district. Supervisor Mitchell has always worked with the understanding that creating a California where all residents can thrive means investing in the communities, small businesses, families, and children of LA County. And finally, Fazia Davenport is Los Angeles County's chief executive officer, responsible for managing the strategic direction and day-to-day -day operations of the nation's largest municipal government. Ladies and gentlemen, Supervisor Sheila Kuhl. Hi, I'm LA County Supervisor Sheila Kuehl, and I represent the county's third district, which stretches from Venice up the coast to Malibu, east to Los Feliz, and over the hill, including almost the entire San Fernando Valley. I'm very, very happy to be here with you. Uh, as some of you probably know, I'm a former actress and an avid movie fan. I mean, film and TV people are my kind of people. It's really good to see that local production is rebounding so strongly as we emerge from the pandemic. I mean, who would have imagined we'd see the third strongest quarter we've had in 26 years? But, of course, we're not totally back to normal, whether we're talking film, TV, digital production, or COVID-19. I'd like to think that all of you have been vaccinated, but if there are any stragglers out there, please know you are 43 times more likely to die if you do contract COVID. Those are long odds and nobody should be betting on them. For those of you who should be getting a booster shot, please go get one. And if you have young children, approval of the vaccine for five to 11 year olds is just around the corner. The pandemic's not over. We continue to see well over a hundred deaths a week and over a thousand new cases every day. Getting vaccinated, masking up indoors are the twin strategies that can help us avoid a winter surge. And if we can avoid backsliding on the virus, I'm very confident we can continue to grow the numbers we see in this new Film LA report. So thank you very much for doing your part to keep yourself, your family, your community, and your industry safe through this very difficult time. Thanks. Hi everyone, I'm Hilda Solis, Chair of Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors representing the First District. Welcome to the second session of LA 2021 Future of Creative Talent Summit. Over the last 20 months or so, the county and, and the industry have faced numerous challenges to work safely amidst the COVID pandemic. And now production activity is at its highest point in over 20 years. This is a testament to the outstanding safety protocols that you have put in place and continue to this day. Today's summit will focus on best practices for creative talent, career pipeline programs, and the challenges connecting employment opportunities with trained, diverse talent. The film, TV, and digital media sector is the second largest sector in the county with contract workers. It accounts for 31% of the industry's employment in California and 38% in LA County. There are nearly 57,120 entertainment and digital media establishments in California. With production levels at a high level and many job openings, now's the time to ensure that they are filled with qualified and diverse county talent so that the stories being told reflect the diversity of the county and the nation. 
I hope that today's panel discussion was strategized on some concrete solutions to address equitable access and inspire change in the way the industry recruits and trains future talent. Thank you all for your partnership and for joining us today to envision a new future for the industry. Good morning, I'm Holly Mitchell, LA County Supervisor for the Second District, and I'm honored to help welcome all of you to the second session of the LA 2021 Future of Creative Talent Summit. Supporting the film industry has always been important to me. Film and television, as well as digital media, are California's premier industries, and you've always been the top employer in the districts I've had the pleasure of representing since I first ran for public office. When I served in the California legislature, I was proud to author Senate Bill 951, which was the California Film Tax Credit 3.0. Our goal was to accommodate the workload of our production process. We fought hard to include in that version of the film tax credit career pathways and diversity into film and television for many creating many family sustaining jobs. Inclusion must be the norm for our future generations in the creative arts industry. And so I'm asking that we continue to work together, government and the industry, to promote good paying jobs in the film industry. Not only does this create career pathways into the middle class, but it also contributes significantly to our local economy. Our film and digital media industry has the power to make deep investments in communities, families, and career opportunities that can make this a more inclusive industry. Representation matters in front of and behind the camera, and it shapes how we see ourselves and how society views us. The county is stepping up to provide a pipeline of trained, work-ready individuals from a diversity of background and experiences. So, you know, I encourage everybody to ask ourselves the questions, how can we be more inclusive? How do we open up the industry to below the line careers for everyone? It's my hope that today's discussion will stimulate more ideas and action that will lead to meaningful engagement with our hardly served communities. With production levels at its highest point in over 20 years, now is the time to transform the workforce to truly reflect all of the diversity and brilliance of LA County, as well as the nation. So thank you. And I look forward to continuing our partnership to ensure a thriving LA County for us all. Good morning. I'm Thesia Davenport, Chief Executive Officer of Los Angeles County. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to today's Future of Creative Talent Summit. Today, we have a special focus on creating more equitable career pathways and opportunities for young people and adults from underserved communities. Now more than ever, we are encouraged by the resilience and commitment of our hometown industry. We are excited to partner with you as we move through the COVID-19 emergency and recovery toward a future we intend to make better than before the pandemic. As you know, Hollywood is not just an international dream factory. You also fulfill individual dreams by creating jobs and economic opportunities. The health of the entertainment sector lifts all aspects of LA County's economy. More production means more jobs, more support for small businesses, more stability for families, more resources to get people housed and stay housed, and more opportunities for young people to land jobs and begin creating an economically viable future. Over the past 20 months, this industry has faced daunting challenges, as you know only too well. As of April 2021, film and TV production had dropped to 40% of pre-COVID levels. But Hollywood loves a good comeback story, and that is exactly what we are seeing today. Permit applications right now are at their highest level in more than 20 years. This is due in large part to the important safety protocols you have put in place and continue to implement. I'd like to personally thank you for complying with our public health workplace guidance and implementing protocols that have saved lives and set the stage for the rebound that is now underway. In partnership with the film and television industry, Los Angeles County is committed to ensuring that as the industry recovers, open positions are filled with the qualified and diverse talent that is present throughout our communities. In that spirit, 
Today's summit will focus on best practices for building creative career pipeline programs to reach deeper into our communities and overcome challenges in connecting employment opportunities with our trained and highly diverse talent pool. As you know, there are already pipeline programs at community colleges and universities, in the studios, and at some nonprofits. But it is still difficult for a young person to navigate these programs or even become aware of them in the first place, especially in underserved and under-resourced communities. There's also a need to develop a curriculum that reflects the ever-changing skill sets needed in today's entertainment industry. Today's panel discussions will highlight concrete solutions to address equitable access and inspire change in the way the industry recruits and trains future talent, both below and above the line. I'd like to close by underscoring that this is not just an entertainment industry issue. Creating expanded opportunities is everyone's job, and that is something we take seriously here at Los Angeles County. To that end, we have launched the Anti-Racism, Diversity, and Inclusion Initiative, which has developed a tool to ensure equitable distribution of nearly $2 billion in American Rescue Plan recovery funds we will be deploying to hard-hit communities and to support a broad range of innovative, equity-focused programs. And that is just one way in which the county is putting our money where our mouth is when it comes to creating a more just and more equitable future for all of our residents. Thank you for being a part of this very important movement for change. Thank you for striving to tell the stories of who we really are and for working to create a more diverse workforce that looks more like our communities. We have a great program in store for you today. I hope you come away with plenty of fresh ideas and inspiration. Enjoy the summit. Thank you again to our supervisor and the CEO for your leadership and support of this event. Before we jump into our first panel, I am delighted to introduce Adam J. Fowler, Director of Research at Beacon Economics, to set the scene with the latest data available on LA County's creative economy workforce. Adam's projects focus on economic and workforce development strategies, environmental economics, and domestic energy, housing and population trends, the creative economy, and its workforce. Take it away, Adam. Good morning. Uh, thank you so much, Sherry, for that uh, very kind introduction. It's great to be here um, with a lot of familiar faces from April. Um, this morning, briefly, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, our occupational forecast as it relates to those creative occupations in the film and digital media space. In April, we talked a lot about the impact of COVID on the industry, along with tourism, uh, motion pictures, sound recording, in-person activities, were really uh, impacted. Over the year, uh, we had a, a, a contraction of about 14% in motion picture industries. Uh, that was a really big hit in, in a period of time that had seen really uh, enormous growth and continuing uh, expansion of uh, a lot of firms in the Los Angeles County region in the space. Uh, our colleagues at Film LA have recently released uh, third quarter uh, permitting numbers, and we are beginning to break records. We're beginning to see uh, impacts uh, of those permitting activities that look a lot like uh, the pre-pandemic uh, period of time of 2016, 2018, and that's exciting. Folks in the industry are uh, busy. We have a backlog of content and a lot of uh, uh, studios, and uh, we are working hard in Los Angeles to film that content. We've updated our uh, long-term forecast for motion picture and the associated occupations. Um, as we talk today, I think one of the things I see from uh, the regional economy perspective is that this industry and its associated industries of software publishing, software broadcasting, teleproduction, these are spaces that are going to really drive our economy in Southern California over the next decade. And with that, the opportunity to bring new voices, bring new individuals into really well-paying jobs, uh, both above the line and below the line. And so today's conversation, I think, is both important 
um, uh, bringing people in, diversifying, looking to uh, broaden our footprint of who participates in the industry. But at the same time, doing this right is really going to be a, a big economic strategy uh, for the region over the next decade. Content is king. Uh, content continues to proliferate and expand uh, across uh, the ecosystem, both domestically and around the globe. Uh, new forms, new platforms, disruption in technology are really playing a key role. The conversations today, uh, I think, are built on top of that empirical reality, that the educational, the nonprofit, the pipeline infrastructure um, is going to evolve. Um, what worked for uh, the film industry of the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s is going to evolve as the industry itself changes. Uh, you know, film schools, uh, uh, our nonprofit partners, lots of different folks are going to beginning are going to begin to play a very important role as it relates to skilling those folks uh, for those future opportunities. Looking at the data. Um, year over year, 2019, uh, a high watermark for employment in Los Angeles is seen on the slide here. Uh, 2020, uh, during that COVID period in total, our updated estimates given revisions from the Department of uh, Employment at, in California show about a 14% contraction. Uh, over closing out 2021, we estimate uh, about an uptick of 1%. Looking to the next 10 years, we're seeing growth of uh, forecasted growth of roughly 20% from that 2020 to 2030 period. In that period of growth, that industry is going to be outpacing a number of peer industries in both the sheer size, the number of bodies employed, and number two, in uh, uh, the growth in uh, output. And so it's, it's a really important opportunity uh, to facilitate that growth and begin to pivot from treading water, uh, just trying to recover, to uh, looking forward, proactively uh, engaging and building out infrastructure to support and nurture that growth. What do we know about those individuals working in the motion picture and sound industries? They're a lot wider than the region itself. 65% um, across uh, all occupations in motion picture and sound recording uh, are white. Um, uh, Hispanic Latinos make up roughly 15% of, uh, of the employed workforce, uh, both self-employed and uh, W-2 employees. Looking at African Americans, 8%, a little over uh, almost 9% uh, in the region uh, are Black. Asian, uh, 7%, and those that identify two or more races, about uh, 3%. This points to an opportunity. Uh, to bring in a lot of our uh, individuals in the region uh, to begin to diversify and think about what are the skill sets, what are the requirements, uh, how do we signal uh, potential success in this industry? Is it simply a four-year degree? Is the proxy we use, is that symbolize something? Or are there other pathways for folks that may not require debt burdens? These are all questions that today's conversations are going to think about uh, as we begin to think uh, about the skill sets that matter moving forward. The thing that I think, again, underlies the really uh, energy, passion, and uh, importance uh, placed on this sector by the Board of Supervisors and uh, a lot of nonprofit and workforce colleagues um, is just the sheer opportunity over the next decade. Looking at this slide, this is the top 10 largest occupational categories. Uh, in motion picture sound recording industries. Uh, one of the things that stands out to me is our forecasted uh, growth, double digits across almost each of these top 10 occupations, producers and directors over the next decade, a 22% growth in motion picture sound recording industries, film and video editors, uh, a 33% forecasted growth, animation, one of the few uh, uh, labor union uh, areas that uh, saw membership growth during the pandemic. One of two of our local uh, unions here in Los Angeles County that saw membership growth during the pandemic. And that reflects uh, the demand for animated content, uh, both 3D and more traditional uh, 2D. 
camera operators, lighting technicians, sound engineering technicians, um, all of these folks are a, a real growth opportunity for the region. They're also well-paying jobs. These offer a middle-class uh, life for Los Angelinos um, and continue to show uh, job growth uh, potential, so advancement, uh, increasing wage over the, the tenure and lifetime of the individual in the job. That is a, a really amazing opportunity for our residents to both participate in the economy and then uh, uh, invest their household spending uh, to support adjacent industries here in the county. Um, each of these, again, a record uh, growth opportunity and uh, one of the more exciting, uh, I think, things uh, to think creatively about. Where can uh, skill sets be developed outside of traditional four-year pipelines? And where can public and private partners come together and look to solve some of these industries to both keep Los Angeles leading uh, the future of talent uh, and directing what that looks like around the globe moving forward. Finally, I wanna say, as I look long-term um, into the next decade, as we look as policymakers, uh, economic developers, workforce developers, community college leaders about uh, planning, uh, strategy, coalition building, I think uh, in the short term, what we've seen uh, I, I post here, we, we've got some short-term bottlenecks. One of those being, as you can see here, skill demand over the past 12 months. This is from all uh, entertainment websites that uh, post jobs. We all know that there's large swaths of the industry that are uh, referral-based, so by no means is this the entire ecosystem, but this is uh, 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 data from those posts that are on public uh, uh, platforms. What we've seen over the past year during the pandemic um, is a real uh, hunger for folks on uh, the finance and accounting side of the house. Those skill sets, production accounting skill sets, have uh, risen to uh, the top of the skill clusters we've seen posted uh, over the last 12 months. Uh, you also see some of the post-production workflow changes uh, and expertise in uh, various forms of remote production as some of those systems that were initially trying to solve uh, challenges in the short term have uh, been a little stickier and may change workflows moving forward. Finally, uh, in conclusion, I, there are a number of opportunities, but two things stand out as we talk about the workforce components today uh, across the panels. One of them is the, the ecosystem of apprentice and other pipeline programs in Los Angeles took a hit during the pandemic. Um, folks that were standing up, investing in programs, um, had built a lot of that curriculum and infrastructure around in-person experiential learning. Um, as they were trying to uh, update workflows as it related to the, the core line of business, th there wasn't time or resources for a lot of those programs to make the pivot to an online program. And so rather than taking on uh, interns, apprentices, lots of uh, uh, production, teleproduction, uh, other firms in the industry uh, simply put those programs on pause, not having time or resources. Now, on the other hand, at the same time, we're also seeing an increased demand for content and human beings. Uh, this is not just in the motion picture industry, over the next couple of years, uh, labor, uh, labor demand, labor per force participation are gonna be front and center in the economy, both in Los Angeles and across the United States. So at the same time, we have increased demand in this industry. We've seen actually a, a real uh, a contraction in those programs that were doing a lot of the work simply because they weren't able to pivot really rapidly to do that experiential learning, training, apprenticeship, uh, an internship programming online rather than in person. So that is a gap uh, we'll be thinking about feeling, looking at uh, scaling uh, folks that have been able to make that digital pivot because it's very important and it's kind of happening hand in hand with the increased demand. Finally, in the short term, production accounting and finance are, are have been real challenges and will continue to be in terms of skill sets. Uh, again, this is an area where employment and workforce data um, sometimes isn't always as uh, enlightening, as eye-opening as it should be. Um, you know, if, if you were to ask about 
forecasted demand for accountants, uh, that doesn't look um, uh, to be much above trend from the economy at large in Los Angeles. But for those accountants working in a specific industry, in this case, motion picture, uh, the demand is very high. And so uh, it's, it's oftentimes a bit of a challenge to advocate around the demand without that kind of anecdotal and partnership feedback. And the county is uh, bringing those folks together, I think, today to help articulate that where empirical data may not show that as clearly. Uh, finally, I think, again, this is, uh, we need to think about uh, the opportunity. Uh, as we see 20 and 30% growth in these occupations, um, it's time uh, to move away from um, the confusion and lack of transparency about what these career pathways look like. Um, there's simply gonna be too much demand for talent uh, for that to continue to operate in the shadows. Uh, language, uh, ideas, these things need to be able to cross-pollinate. The folks in workforce, economic development, uh, simply can't uh, be siloed and not uh, understand what the cre creative economy looks like and what uh, uh, the, the best practices and successful programs are. The issues of the motion picture, film and digital media in Los Angeles are issues of the economy. And to the extent uh, we're unable to articulate, uh, share, uh, communicate what uh, a, a career trajectory or pathway looks like, that's a real problem. That's an artificial constraint on our growth for the region. And so uh, moving beyond um, uh, lack of clarity and transparency is really, uh, I think, our next challenge for this region. And I look forward to hearing the conversations later today with our panelists. Uh, it's good to see everyone again. I hope you have a great rest of the summit and I will see you later today. Thank you. Thank you, Adam.